Hello everybody, we're going to be using ARCHICAD today and studying about the Solid Elements Operations tool. This is an interesting tool that helps us um, kind of manage the relationship between different objects in ARCHICAD. So we're going to go, in this example, we're going to go over into the backyard and play with these shells and how they interact with the ground, the topography. So the first things we're going to be talking about are the two different kinds of elements. We have a target element and an operator element. The target element is what is affected by the operator element. So we have different operations. And so the target element will either be affected by a subtraction or an, or an addition of the operator element. So we will be running through these different these five different operations so you can see kind of how they work and how they relate with the other objects. We'll start with selecting the target element. We're going to be using the topography for this example. I just placed the box. We didn't want to do that though. Okay, cool. We're going to be choosing the target element, so we're going to select the topography. And once it's highlighted, we can then select it and we change the targets to one. We then have to go and get our operator element, which we will push the escape key and then select um, a shell. Actually, let's select the other one. Cool. So with this one, we will go and take that operator and we'll use this the standard subtraction tool. And so let's see what happens. Okay, as we can see the topography, which made our target element was cut by this shell. We see the outline here of the shell. There is no earth where this shape intersects with the topography. If we were to go back and compare before this operation, the two objects just intersected without any defined relationship. But after we applied the subtraction operation, we see that it is clearly cut by the shell. Cool. Let's go ahead and try the next one. We have subtraction with an upward extrusion. Upward extrusion is where you take the object and imagine there's substance above the plane. And that also is used as a subtraction. So we'll highlight the topography, make that our target element, and let's choose this shell to be our operator element. Now, unlike just normal subtraction, not only is it going to subtract the shape, but also everything above that shape's plane. So if you imagine it in 2D, this shape, if you're looking at a plan view, has like an outline. And everything above that outline will be used in the subtraction process. Okay, so let's execute this and see. Okay, so we see how there is a hole here where the shell is sitting in the ground, but also it took out what was um, on top of the shell. Because if there's the basic shape, everything above it, right? So then we have this nice divot carved out of the earth by this shell. We can kind of see a little bit better to orient this a little bit. Okay, nice. Now as the opposite, we're going to choose the topography again, as the target element. But as the opposite, we have subtraction with a downward extrusion. So we can imagine what will happen will be that we'll have the shape that cuts into the ground, but also everything of the shapes 2D blueprint and below. So we're going to execute this. And we can kind of see through the topography how it made a cut all the way down in the shape of this um, shell's basic layout. So we can actually even go down under here. I found this rather helpful in explaining this, that we can see the shapes basic outline. This basic outline was used to cut into the earth. So it's kind of interesting thinking about these things in 3D and 2D, but every 3D has a 2D kind of a um, print that it makes. So it takes that print and uses it to extrude either upward in this case or downward in this case. Nice, nice. Let's orient ourselves back. There we go. Okay. We will undo a few of the things that we've done just so we can have a clear slate here. Okay. Now we're going to use the next one, which is the intersection. 
So we're going to use the topography again. I feel like using the topography as a target element is easy to see the changes as I illustrate this principle. So our topography is the target element, and we'll use this shell as the operator element. And now we're going to see what happens as we execute this. So it took the topography and only kept what intersected with this shell. You don't even see any green because everything that intersected was under the ground. So, but if we go back to compare, we have all this topography, everything all the way around it, but only the, only the things that were distinctly touched by the shell. See how the shell dips under as well? Just completely taken out. Only kept what was intersected. Now, this is a principle that applies to all the different operations, no matter which one it is. If I were to, um, let's go back, let's apply that operation. If I were to select the operator element after making an operation, and if I were to move it, it still keeps the same properties. It still maintains the same properties of this um, operation, even when you move it. So it doesn't necessarily lock the objects in place, which is interesting. So that's also helpful in case you are maneuvering your objects around after you've already made the operation, you don't have to redo the operation. Nice. Okay, we're gonna end with the last one. The last one is addition, so our target element. Why couldn't I just do these two shells? We've been playing the topography this whole time. I could not do it to these two shells because they're not touching. This objects have to be um, intersecting at some point. So we're just gonna take the topography again, and let's take, let's take this shell. And we get the operator. Cool, and we're gonna add it together. Now, because it's addition, it doesn't necessarily matter if I made the shell the target element or the topography the target element because it's gonna combine them together. So I'm gonna execute this. And we see that it's all considered one entity. If I were to select the topography, it would also select the shell. But actually, now that I think about it, if I were to select the shell, I don't think it would select the topography. Yep, that's right, because it's the operator element. So actually, it does make a difference. Selecting the target element, this, the operator is added to the target, but the operator is still an independent entity of its own. That makes sense. Okay, we all learned something new today. So by using these different tools, we're able to um, kind of handle the interactions between different objects in our drawings. We're gonna go to a real live example of how to use um, this here. We're going down to my basement. There's a couch. We're going to go down to my basement, which happens to be invaded by a lot of topography at the moment. All this topography we want to take out so we can, you know, have them through the basement. And so we're going to use what we've learned in this tutorial and apply it in this real life situation. So obviously, the thing that we want to cut and edit is the topography. So we'll make the topography are target element. There we go. And now what would we use as the operator element? Well, somewhere under here I have a floor and that would be the 2D blueprint. That would be the, um, the shape of what we'd want extruded. So we're going to go down deep in here and dig under here for a little bit and find my floor. Where's my floor? There it is. We're going to select the floor as our operator. Coming back out now, we're going to apply this as subtraction with an upward extrusion. So it just lifts everything above my um, operator element. Let's hope this works. Well, what do you know? Now I have a basement that is not filled with earth. Oops, sorry. That is not filled with earth, and we've just gotten rid of all that. But we can see that it's still, it exists outside outside of the where it was cut by the operator plane. So that is what we have today and 
I hope that you guys can apply this in your drawings as you continue to render and draw and draft and all sorts of things in AutoCAD. Thanks, y'all.